my name is Maya. My name is Jonas. And this is our three kids. Hi, my name is Andreas. And this is... Etia. And this is Ida. And we are all from Denmark. Ida has a very rare condition called Data2, and we would like to tell you how the Data2 Foundation helped save her life. Ida was born in September 2016. When she was born, our family dream was complete. For the first six months of her life, she was the happiest little girl and she was developing completely normal. But then, from one day to another, everything suddenly changed. One morning, when Ida woke up, she had a high fever. Within a few hours, a weird rash appeared all over her body. She had fever every day for several months and we were admitted to the hospital a number of times. Although she couldn't tell, we were sure she was in pain. Our happy little girl was gone. After four months in and out of the hospital, the doctors finally came close to an answer. Her immune system didn't work and she was diagnosed with CVID. At the age of 10 months, she started having gamma globulin infusions. She seemed better almost instantly, but unfortunately, it only lasted for about three weeks. In order to figure out what caused Ida's immune deficiency, the doctors ran a genetic screening. We got the result after three months, which were a mutation in the CECR1 gene. Of course, at the time, we did not know what it meant. Our doctor said that uh, this result was probably nothing, and uh, she asked us not to go home and Google it, because we would only find terrible things like leukemia and stuff like that, and uh, they have already excluded that. Um, she gave us the feeling that, uh, that this gene result was not important for Ida's further treatment and that Ida would get better just by getting her gamma globulin infusions. But despite the gamma globulins, Ida was still sick, so we couldn't just wait and see. Of course, we went home and got online. The only thing we could find at the internet was the Data2 Foundation. We read their entire homepage and we watched their YouTube channel. Welcome to the inaugural international conference on the deficiency of ADAT. And we simply did not believe that the answer to Ida's symptoms could be that rare. At the time, she was one out of 156 in the world, and as far as we knew, the only one diagnosed in Denmark. We decided to write to Dr. Chip Chambers, founder and president of the Data2 Foundation. He quickly responded. And not only did he confirm that Ida's story and genetic result were consistent with Data2, he guided us in how to enlighten our doctor about this rare disease and the right treatment. After talking to Chip, we knew that Ida's life depended on the right treatment. We reached a point where it was clear to us we needed to find new doctors who had knowledge about Data2. Dr. Chambers are in contact with doctors all over the world who have experience with this condition. He offered to put us in contact with any of them, and we chose the most experienced one, Dr. Dan Kastner and Dr. Amanda Umbrello at the National Institute of Health in the USA. They have been seeing patients from all over the world since Data2 was discovered back in 2014. They invited us to come to the NIH, our contact person there, to care of almost everything. So we booked our flight and flew to the US about a month later. So, after almost 24 hours of traveling, we are in DC. And uh, Monday, we have our first appointment at NIH. We are looking uh, forward to meet everyone and to learn more about day two. And as for now, we are going to sleep. <laughs> Bye now! Today, we got over to the clinical center to get uh, either registered and Ida had an ultrasound, an abdominal ultrasound. Dr. Umbrella's team had scheduled appointments for the whole week at the clinical center. Ida had x-rays and blood work done. She was examined by doctors from seven different specialities. They knew exactly what to look for and they had the answer to our many questions. They were the nicest persons we have ever met. During our visit at the NIH, we stayed at the Children's Inn. One of the most amazing experiences was that we got to meet another Data2 patient. 
So we are at the inn and we meet Karen, who is also a Data 2 patient. <laughs> so my newest friend. Yes, and I and Kevin got friends now. <laughs> so that's great. And Kevin is actually the first Data 2 patient we talked to face to face. So that's quite impressive to meet <laughs> someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, everybody. Hey, five. Hey, now we are back home and Ida is doing very well. We managed to find two very kind and competent doctors. They both specialize in also inflammatory diseases and they are very interested in learning all about data too. They monitor Ida and her treatment very close and they consult with Dr. Umbrella's team at the NIH in order to help Ida the best way possible. Although it's an almost two hour drive each way, the right doctors are definitely worth it. As we see it, the Data2 Foundation saved our daughter's life, we regained hope for Ida through this very committed organization, and we found a worldwide family who understand what it's like to live with a rare disease. So to everyone out there who might be in the same position as we were, please know that there is hope. Just reach out and become a part of it. <laughs>